so there was three they were really really nice we're gonna go see them later on tonight anyway so it's gonna be a fun time Hey everyone, welcome back to Music Mania. It's me, Christina. Today, we are finally here in Vegas for when we were young. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit tired right now. Um, we left yesterday from LA around five o'clock in the afternoon. We didn't get here until almost midnight, practically a little bit after midnight. So I'm a little bit tired, but I am going to both days of when we were young today. So today is day one. And there's all this knocking going on. I don't know what's happening here, but I'm so excited. I've got my outfit here. I'm so, so ready. Oh my. It's gonna be a long day. It's hot outside. I think it's already gonna be in the 90s, like mid 90s today. So it's gonna be a hot day. But I'm grateful because at least there is no wind because I'm traumatized from last year. But, anyways, let's get this day started. I, let me see, I'm really, really excited. I think we're gonna be at the smaller stages for today and then we're gonna do all the big stages tomorrow. So let's get to it. There's two days of this. I'm really, really excited to see everybody. Ah, all right, let's go. Yeah, uh, how the This took an hour. All of this took an hour. This is crazy. Welcome to Vegas. Yes, we finally made it in. We got free water. They gave us free water. It's hot outside. It's like almost 90 degrees out now. So yeah, definitely this staying hydrated. It's gonna be a long day today. Nah, this is so cool. Look at this. The cemetery. What is going on here? Our first booth of the day, getting alcohol. Snag the swag.
to go to sleep. I am so tired. This weather wrecked me terribly. So let me get out of here and I'm gonna wake up the next morning and do all this over again. So yeah, woo! All right, I'm back. It's time for day two. We've got the blank stuff going on here. I'm trying to see if I can show my entire outfit, but yeah. Blink shirt with squirts and tights. I think it actually looks pretty cool. I have my eye makeup here. It is so bright outside. I can barely see without these on. Oh my goodness. Yesterday was just a lot. I think it took us, we got back here to our place around almost one in the morning. And we had left the festival at 11. Yeah, this, this racing stuff, over here that they're building at the strip is just really screwing everything over. So we'll see how today goes. We're seeing all the big bands today. So we're seeing at that pink and green stage area. I'm really, really excited. There's so many different bands I wanna go see at those stages, especially of course, Green Day and Blink-182. So let's do it. Let's see what happens. Um, today's supposed to be a little bit cooler than yesterday. Yesterday was just, it was something. This Vegas heat is really no joke, but um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes today. It's supposed to be a little bit cooler, so hopefully the weather won't be as terrible. And yeah, we'll just get straight to it. If I don't talk much while I'm there, it's because it's so loud. Like every single like festival set that we went to was loud, and they had the bass like super duper high. So if I'm not talking much, that's why I'm gonna explain more when I get back home. But just to let you guys know all right today's check-in was like literally less than five minutes and we walked right in how i don't know how this happened but it worked now we're here again day two yay Woo!
So let's pack our bags, settle down where palm trees grow.
and I'm so sorry. I cannot sleep, I cannot dream tonight. semi-gone my makeup is a disaster but that's it's good right it happens when something is really really fun especially a festival i can't even believe it's over i've had plans to go to this for just about a year now so this is actually insane whoa like this is crazy but now I'm here, it's one in the morning, because getting an Uber, especially this year, was actually terrible. But I'm going to go to bed soon, just need to wash my face and get myself together, and then make the drive back home. That'll be fun. Five plus hours back to LA, yay! Um, but yeah, let me go to bed, 
and then I'm gonna hit the road and then I'll tell you guys everything that happened later because there's so many different things you guys didn't see on camera but I'm just gonna share them later when I get home so let me go to bed because I am so tired so yeah I'll see you guys in a bit okay so I'm finally back from Vegas this is being filmed two days after because I am just so wrecked coming just from the fact of going to and from Vegas which is six hours both ways so that already is a lot of driving then we had the festival for two days straight with me you know jumping around and running around everywhere and and having the best time and then plus barely getting enough sleep so that all just kind of added in together and then i used yesterday to kind of just sleep in and not really do too much because my entire body was hurting. But with all that being said though, I would totally do all of that again, especially going two days. I feel like two days, I got to see so many bands. I calculated it with my friends. I think we saw a good half of the entire lineup this year within the two days. So it was about 27 bands, she said, which honestly that checks out because we saw so many bands in between waiting for the other bands that we wanted to go see so we were just watching music all weekend long i honestly would have done both days of last year's festival too but most of us know how that ended up so that didn't really end up happening but it's so interesting to see how the weather changed especially because the weather was in fact what caused the, that first day to be canceled but um yeah actually i did go to last year's too so it's very interesting it's like the contrast because last year was just so windy that windstorm was no joke like you had to be there to really understand why they could not put that festival on the first day like that trip in and of itself i wasn't even vlogging at that time and even then i was like maybe i should vlog this but i didn't and it was crazy even just that windstorm even it was still windy the next day a little bit too but not as much as it was coming in there was that but now this year right it was hot like completely different end of windy and cold it got cold but like way later on at night though but this year oh, especially saturday saturday was no joke Saturday, I think, was around like 95 degrees or something like that. It was so hot to the point where the other bands that were playing on stage were addressing about, you know, how hot it is and making sure that everyone was staying hydrated because it was, it was something. And of course, you know, most of us are wearing black. That's actually the same day I wore that black outfit too. I was sweating a lot, like profusely a lot. I was lucky that I had water and hydration powders and all that stuff because oh boy that was that was really a time it was at the point where most people by like three o'clock in the afternoon were already napping and dozing off and going to the covered areas and rest areas to nap because you know a lot of us are more older that are going to that festival too especially with all those big name bands on the on the list there but it was really something now me i just i powered through so i was able to do it but saturday was insane so i feel like the energy from the crowds was not as good as it was on sunday sunday was a way better crowd i will say judging just from being in both crowds i confidently can say that sunday was definitely the better crowd now to talk about the bands themselves i'm just gonna start off by this I'm gonna say it right now. I personally liked last year's lineup a little bit more than this one. Now, I definitely don't regret going to this one either because there were a lot of fantastic bands this year as well. I don't know how this festival does it. I don't know how they gather all these bands together for this, but somehow they managed it. But I just feel like personally, I like last year's lineup a lot better because Paramore was there. And that's no secret that they're my favorite band of all time so i'm a little bit biased towards that but i will say 
I did like that I went to both days of this festival. I got to see so many bands that I have never seen. I saw a few that I've already seen before, but we definitely saw more people that we haven't seen before. Now, as far as the bands themselves go, we watched a lot of bands, but I'll start with the smaller stages first because we watched those on Saturday. From the smaller stages, I really liked the Rex. The Rex were really fun to watch. A lot of people have recommended for me to go listen to their music and their show definitely kind of confirmed that because I did like the music. So I'll definitely check out more of their music in the future. I also really did like Simple Plan set. Um, now it's definitely hard especially too whenever you're competing against Blink-182 and Green Day when they're headlining the whole festival. Because I would have thought that Simple Plan would have played on one of the bigger stages, but that's probably because of crowd control and definitely, you know, trying to manage the fallout of two humongous bands playing at the exact same time as you. Now, granted, Simple Plan also did have a humongous audience as well, too. So there was definitely that. Now, I was barricade, GA barricade for that show, but they were really fun to watch. Lots of nostalgia in there. Just, you know, I just always go check out Simple Plan just for the nostalgia of it. And then we also have Water Parks. Oh, Water Parks was a lot of fun. I've seen them live before, but this is my second time seeing them live now. And we also did get to meet them, and like you guys saw, in the vlog earlier. Um, they were really, really nice. Really, really nice. All nice guys. Like they took pictures with everybody that were there at the skate ramp. And we just had like a little conversations and we told them that we were gonna go watch them. So they knew, they were excited. But they were really nice, took pictures with them. And then we watched their set. They were a lot of fun. Hopefully I'll get to see them when they go on their own solo tour because I know they just had announced that recently or they were gonna announce one. Oh, also Kenny Hoopla. Kenny Hoopla was a very fun one to watch as well. Uh, I was actually recommended to go check out his set from a friend of mine. So I was like, you know what? I'm already here. Like, let me go stay and watch. But he actually had a pretty decent audience size. Granted from the fact that Green Day was playing at the exact same time and that's a pretty tough competitor to beat. So yeah. Especially with, you know, I felt sorry for all the bands that were playing at the exact same time as Blink-182 and Green Day because those are just very tough competitors in general. But the Kenny Hoopla set was really fun. He really engages with the audience a lot and his songs were really, really fun too. And lastly, for the smaller stages, Bowling for Soup. They were probably the most unhinged set I had watched the entire weekend. In more ways than one. Oh man, and there's video evidence of some of what I'm about to tell you. So anyways, I'm gonna go into story time because you guys not see this in the vlog because I didn't get it on camera, but somebody else did. So, <laughs> so I was there for Bowling for Soup. We were at the Stripe stage. Massive audience for them too. And keep in mind, this is when Blink-182 was playing, so you know, you know they're pretty popular too. So we were at Barricade, at the GA Barricade for Bowling for Soup as well. Really, really fun. Uh, just the stuff that goes on on stage in general too is already unhinged because they're just really funny and silly, but their songs like slap. But I'm not even getting into what happened. So basically, so I would say the first song in that they started the set, my friend and I are just, you know, dancing around and jumping around near the barricade, right? And I look over to my left and there is a guy, and I'm not even joking, I'm not joking, I will put a video because we found video evidence I'll put that in the description box. So there is a guy who had a pink and green bunny suit on. I, I know, I know. Pink and green bunny suit on. So this guy was at the GA barricade like most of us were. So I don't know what happened or how he did it, 
all of a sudden I look and I just see Bunny Guy hop over from the GA barricade all the way into VIP because the way that they had the GA and VIP kind of set up was that VIP was more of the front row. Like they were front row, front row if they wanted to be, you know. There was also a little bit of room outside too, but they were pretty much near the front of the stage. So, and then we just had that barricade that was blocking off GA from VIP. But even at the GA barricade, I could still see them pretty well. So, but anyways, so Mr. Bunny Man hops over from the barricade from GA to VIP. I'm talking like he like literally like yeets over the barricade. And as he's doing that, I literally laugh every time I tell the story. As he's hopping over the gate, he face plants on the floor and eats it. And I'm talking like he literally like hops over and his face like hit the floor or like just his entire body hit the floor. And then I kid you not, not even five seconds goes by. Not even five seconds goes by, and he hops up, like, he he jumps up like nothing just happened to him, like he didn't just fall on his head right now. He hops back up and runs inside to, like, where the VIP crowd is. So now he's, like, second or third row. Like, he just, he went for it, like, fully booked it in there. Keep in mind, I don't know if security saw that or if anything happened, but there was no reaction to that. So I was already laughing. I was like, you know, I thought that was the end of it. I thought, I thought that was the end of it. <laughs> so now he's just in there and he's noticeable because obviously you're noticeable whenever you're wearing a bunny suit and this guy's ears were like literally like all the way up. So you can see him to the point where, to the point where, of course, you know, with any concert, they have cameras on the audience. So, you know, they're, you know, they're catching people on the camera. They zoom in on this guy, and this guy is, is covering his face. So he knows. He knows what he did. He knows entirely what he's doing. But then, the kicker is, I did not see this coming. I thought that was the end of it. But now, now, of course, is when the unhinged stuff really starts happening. Of course, they were pretty unhinged on stage as it was. But now they're doing like this random bit where they're just kind of fooling around with the audience and kind of doing whatever, right? When all of a sudden, Mr. Bunny Man hops over from the VIP barricade on the stage. He's on stage now. I kid you not. And there's a video evidence of this. And like I said, I'll put it in the description box. But Mance was literally on stage. And the funny thing is, is that he didn't know what, he didn't even know what he was doing on stage. He just somehow was just he was just standing there. And security, for whatever reason, nowhere to be found, no reaction to it. That guy was literally standing on stage, just walking around. The band was literally fooling around. They I think he ended up talking to the band members too, because they addressed that in a little bit after. But he was literally just walking around stage, not doing really much of anything. It took somebody that was sitting on the side stage to realize that he was not a part of the bit. And it took them a good 30 seconds to realize. So, of course, you know, whoever that person was, whether it was a stagehand or somebody that was with the band themselves, because it didn't look like he was security or anything, that guy literally had to yank him off stage. So I don't know what was going on with the security there. Someone wasn't doing their job. Because how was he even able to jump that is the question. But it was funny because then the band afterwards, shortly after, they made a joke about it. Which is really funny. They addressed it. They were like, hey, you know, that guy was on, on stage with a bunny suit. We had no idea what he was saying because he was, he was on drugs. And you, you know, honestly, you could tell he was on drugs. Especially the way he was acting. So... It made sense, but yeah, Bowling for Soup, very, very fun in general. 
and just overall a very very fun time we're talking about the main stages and as far as the main stages go i'm glad that i went to those on sunday because overall like i said crowd was better on sunday and just the weather in general too as well was also better on sunday sunday had about like 80 to 85 degrees during the day and like i said saturday was 95 so a lot better in general but i'm also glad that i went sunday because i just feel like well, like I said, of the better energy of the two crowds. And some of my all-time favorites from the bigger stages, I really, really liked Sum 41. Sum 41 was actually really fun. Um, I was more towards the back for that set, like pretty far back, actually, I would say. But even just hearing the songs and like looking at the screens and stuff, it was a lot of fun. Like, Sum 41, I don't know what's going to happen after they're done as a band officially because their they're disbandment is coming very soon, but they're really, really fun to watch as well. I also really liked Pierce the Veil. Now, Pierce the Veil... Pierce the Veil is actually the set that we got caught up in the most mosh pits to. Uh... That one, of course, I did expect a lot, so I wasn't shocked, but that one, there was a mosh pit that opened up directly right next to us, and it was fun, you know, but it was crazy. It was crazy. It was, it was crazy, but also very, very fun, too. Also, Yellow Card was so much fun to watch as well. Yellow Card, oh my goodness. It was so much fun. I was dancing around and jumping along to that set, too, the entire day. Uh, lots and lots of fun to watch. And yeah, it was just, especially with Ocean Avenue, that song is, that's like one of my all-time favorite pop punk songs. So that was just really, really fun to watch live. Also, Rise Against. Now, they're an older band, uh, but I like them, especially because that's kind of the music that I listened to growing up as a kid. So that one was really, really fun to watch too. Uh... They actually, they brought out Ryan from Yellow Card to sing one of the songs too as well. So that was a nice little fun surprise. And I was glad that I checked out Good Charlotte too as well. I was actually supposed to go see them at the Final Warp Tour in Mountain View a couple of years ago in 2019. But I think they canceled out of it last minute. I think there was some sort of family emergency and that's why they couldn't do it. So we finally got to watch them here. And they're really fun too. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. They also brought out Lil Wayne. Now, that I had no idea was coming. No clue. I literally had no idea that that was going to happen. I don't think anybody did. Because they started playing A Millie by Lil Wayne. And I was in the crowd. I was like, why are they playing Lil Wayne? Like, why? I'm like, huh? And then it took me a couple seconds to realize that Lil Wayne was on stage with them. And the entire crowd, when the entire crowd saw that, they went ballistic. That crowd was loud when he came out. It was amazing. 30 Seconds to Mars was an interesting one to watch, I will say. I don't know how I felt about it. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, we saw Jared Leto, so the only reason I was even there in that crowd was because of everyone else that was gonna play right after, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But, but Jared Leto is really just a character on stage. I don't know, like, I had never been to a 30 Second Samar show before, so that was my very first like time being exposed to that. So he was definitely an interesting character, I would say. Now, The Offspring, that band, that band I knew was not going to make me upset or anything. That band I knew was going to come through. The Offspring, I this is only my second time seeing them live. And... Every single time I've gone, both times, they've done incredible. Like, they're set. The Offspring, uh, I would just recommend anybody to go watch an Offspring show. So much fun. So many hits. So many. So many that I knew. Crazy. So many. Like, it was so fun. You know it's a lot of fun? Whenever they're just really engaging with the crowd and the crowd is loud the entire time. I knew, I knew they were not going to let me down. I saw the offspring on that lineup alone last year. I was like, oh yeah, they're going to do incredible. And sure enough, 
Their set was like probably one of my favorites of the entire weekend. And now we have Blink-182. Now, this was my first time ever watching them live, so already I was just so, so excited. They put on a really, really good show. I enjoyed it so, so much. So many hits, so many songs I didn't think that they would sing, but they actually did sing, which I was very shocked by. Um, but, you know, you know how festivals go, if you've been to festivals before, um, if there's people that are standing in front of you that are a little bit taller, you're kind of out of luck. So, it was a little bit like that, especially when people are putting up their phones nonstop to record. And now, you know me, I record a whole bunch of stuff for content. You know, it is what it is. People film for whatever. I don't care about that. But there were just some times where I couldn't see. So there was that. Then there were times we also could see as well. So I got to see Travis and Mark and Tom all kind of a little bit close up. Like I could generally see their face a little bit. But it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun just checking out their music and singing along too as well. I will admit though, I will say, I did tear up a little bit for one more time. Like right when that song came on, especially when they had that montage going on in the back with all of them like in their earlier days, I did tear up slightly, so there's that. And then we finally have Green Day. Now, I will say this. I'm shocked that most people left after Blink-182. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe it's because now there's one less stage being used because Blink-182 played on the pink stage and then Green Day, ironically, are playing the green stage. But uh, most people left and were leaving after Blink-182 was done on both days too. It wasn't just on Sunday, it was also Saturday too. But Green Day put on one hell of a show as well. I enjoyed it so much and I've never been to a Green Day show either. So that again was like my very first time watching them. And for Green Day sets, we were really, really close. <laughs> like, I'm talking, I can see, like, all of the band members, like, every single one of them. Like, we were more, like, on the side, like, stage left, I would say, but, like, on the right, kind of. But we were, like, more at, like, an angle where we could see them. But, oh my, like, they were so much fun. Like, Billy Joel, Billy Joel is just... He's just his own personality. That guy, that guy is a character in like a good way. He's a he's a character in a good way. My goodness. Uh lots of fun watching, really good time, incredible amount of hits as well. Okay, now my overall thoughts on the festival. So I'm gonna start off with this. I would go again. I would go again next year. Now, who knows what the lineup is gonna be next year because as of today's date, they haven't revealed any clues or any secrets or anything like that. So, you know, obviously because we just ended it. But I would definitely go again, especially if I consider the lineup to be worthy of me going. Because I go for the music for any festival. But if I find it worthy of going, I think next year I'm going to splurge on VIP. Because it, it just becomes, you know, a point now to where... Just GA is just, it's a lot. Especially with everything that kind of happens when you're in GA versus your experience with VIP. So if the lineup is really, really good next year and there's two days, I might maybe do like GA one day and VIP another day. Or maybe if I miraculously make money somehow, I don't know how, especially in today's economy, maybe I'll get VIP both days. But Overall, I just really want to do VIP next year and kind of, yeah, I think I'll do that, especially with how close VIP is with some of the stages. Like the Ghost and the Stripe stage, you're pretty much front row. And that's like, doesn't matter whether or not if you're like actually at the barricade or like even in the back of the VIP area. Like, you you still have a pretty good view of the entire show. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. Make sure to like this video and also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I'll appreciate it so, so much if you did. Also, check out all my social media accounts. I'll have them up on the screen for you to definitely go follow and check out. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you, Maniacs, in the next video. Bye.